In this video, I'm going to go over how to install WordPress locally on a Windows machine using XAMPP. So the first thing we'll do is download XAMPP. So just Google XAMPP, and then this first link that comes up, you can click on it, and then click on XAMPP for Windows, and that'll download the installer. So XAMPP is like WAMP Server or AMPS or MAMP, if you've ever used one of those programs. And basically what it allows you to do is run an Apache web server locally along with MySQL and PHP. And so you can then actually put your PHP scripts or PHP based things like WordPress in a special directory. And then you can actually access those files via the local web server by using local host in the browser. So I'll show you an example of doing that. So we'll run this installer here and we'll just go through the typical options, just next, next, next. We don't have to set anything special, just the usual stuff. And eventually it'll start installing properly. And when it does, we'll just, we'll just leave it there for a bit. Uh, next, all right. Yeah, so from here it'll take you know a few minutes to install. So we'll leave this here for a few minutes. Okay, so eventually you'll get here when it's all finished up and you're gonna say finish. And this will launch the XAMPP control panel. So we can say start for Apache and start for MySQL. And it'll start those services. So then Apache and MySQL are both running locally. And if you go to Explorer here, this will open up the XAMPP directory. This folder here where it says, let me just find it here. HTDocs, this folder here, HTDocs, this is the one you want. So the HTDocs folder is basically the equivalent of like the public HTML folder on a shared hosting situation or CS Unix. So if you go to localhost now in the browser, so localhost slash, you'll get to this page here. And this here is basically some welcome content that they give you in the HTDocs folder. So localhost is basically mapped to the htdocs folder. And anything you put in here, when you request localhost in the browser, the Apache web server is gonna be serving from this directory here. Again, kind of like public HTML folders in a lot of shared hosting web servers. So if we delete everything in that folder there and we do a refresh, now we get nothing because there's nothing there. But that's actually where we're gonna put our WordPress installation. Now, notably, we've also got phpMyAdmin. So if we go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin, we've also got phpMyAdmin, which is basically the standard way to administer a MySQL database. So from here, we're gonna to wanna to create a database just for our WordPress installation. So a special one just for our WordPress installation. So go to new here to make a new database. And for database name, put in WordPress and then say create. And that'll create a WordPress database there. Okay, so after we've done this, we're gonna to go to the WordPress website. So you can go to Google and you can put in WordPress and you're gonna to wanna to scroll down here to the download for wordpress.org. So download wordpress.org. And then you can scroll down here and you could download the WordPress zip. And then you can just unzip this. It might take a while to unzip, but you gotta unzip this. Should be underneath our downloads folder here. So I'll say extract, extract all. And I'll extract it into the downloads folder for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take the collection of WordPress files you get, and I'm gonna copy them into that htdocs folder because WordPress largely installs itself. Basically what you do with WordPress is you navigate to the folder where your WordPress files are in the browser. And then from there, you're asked to supply the database username, password, and database name where you want WordPress installed. And then from there, the installer basically kind of takes it from there and it'll, it'll kind of finish up uh, 
the installation itself, kind of writing configuration files and creating database tables and so forth. So we'll just let this finish unzipping and then we'll copy over the files to the htdocs folder. Okay, so eventually this will finish unzipping. And what it does in the downloads folder here, we've got this folder here. I'm gonna open this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna want this WordPress folder here. And I'm gonna copy it with WordPress itself. So I'm gonna copy this here. So I'm gonna copy this folder and I'm gonna go back to my htdocs folder where I was. So I'll keep going back here and I should be able to get to my htdocs folder. If you can't get to it this way, if you just go to this PC, you go to C drive and you go to ZAMP and then htdocs here, you can get to it that way too. And then I'm gonna hit control V, I'm gonna paste it in. And I'm gonna paste it in with the actual WordPress folder there. So we'll copy this over here and it shouldn't take too long. This one's going a lot quicker here. Okay, so there's our WordPress folder there. And so now if I go to localhost slash WordPress, I'm gonna be going to my WordPress installation here. And that's what we wanna do. So go to localhost slash and then WordPress. Okay, and then this will bring up the WordPress installation page. And that's where we're gonna be asked for our database username, password, and database name. So we'll give this a second to load here. Make sure that Apache and all that is running, so it is. And then this does load up. And what it's telling us here is you need your database username, password, and, and host, and some other information. So just go to let's go. And then for database name, you can put in WordPress because we created a database called WordPress for this purpose. With XAMPP, with MySQL, we're gonna have the username root. So the username root and the password is gonna be blank, so nothing. And the database host is localhost because it's being hosted locally. And the table prefix, so WordPress goes out and actually creates a whole bunch of tables to store all the data for the website. And if you had multiple WordPress installations underneath one database, you could actually change the table prefix to make it so that effectively the same tables for things like posts and users and things like that, those names wouldn't collide. You'd have like a different prefix for the tables of one WordPress installation than another WordPress installation. But that isn't really relevant for us, so we're just gonna leave it that blank. We'll just leave it WP underscore. So I'll say okay, and then say run the installation. And next it asks us for a site title. So we'll say like Kevin's web blog, my username, we're, we're gonna put an admin there. So put admin for your username, for your password, put in test123 and say confirm use of weak password. Then you can put in your email address here. Okay. So it's gotta be admin, it's gotta be test123 for our purposes. And I'm gonna say here, install WordPress. And then this will actually carry out the rest of the installation. And that's it, it's installed. So the username is admin, the password is test123. If I say log in, I say admin test123, I can log into the back end of my WordPress website. If you go to localhost slash WordPress, you'll see the front end of the website where the actual website itself, the users would see is. And in the back end, we can do all the usual stuff we can do with WordPress website. So we can go to plugins, add new, and we can find some plugin say, and install it. So we could say like, let's install this classic editor, and then we'll activate it after we've installed it here. So you can install WordPress plugins and use them. You could go to appearance, themes, and you could install new themes. So you could say like add new, you could find some new theme here, like this one here. We'll say install it. It'll install the theme. And when it's installed, we can activate it. So we'll click on activate to activate. Oh, it's actually, maybe I already had that one in there or something like that, but it didn't really like that one. I think tried. I think I tried to install it twice, but I could say activate, it'll activate. It's activated now. I could say add new. We could try another one just to make sure there's no problem. Um, so we could go to this 2020 or maybe 
we'll go down here to this go we'll say install and I'll say activate it'll activate and so we can install themes we can we can do things like create posts so I just activated this theme here now so the website does look different now because we activated a different theme I could make different posts too so I could say posts add new and I could make like a new blog post so I could say test test publish and then it's going to go out and create a post like this called test and so we can do all the usual things you can do with the wordpress website just so you know the the themes and plugins that i've just installed there they're actually files that get transferred over and they're underneath w contents so if you go to wp content here underneath the hdocs folder so hdocs wordpress wp content the theme we installed, it's in there. So the Go theme and the other theme 2017, they're both in there. If we go back and we go to the plugins folder, that's where our plugins are install, installed. So that's where the classic editor plugin is. And we actually kind of got this classic editor look, I believe, because that plugin was activated there. So that's why it kind of looks like that classic editor instead of the, the modern WordPress editor. So anyways, that is installing WordPress locally on a Windows machine using XAMPP.